All right, we are deep in April right now. I thought I'd show you some of the spring jobs that I've got going on in the garden, including first job, this amazing kale. This is a variegated kale. It's got white in it. It's called frostbitten kale. This has got to go in its forever home now, and it's going to feed me for months and months to come. Oh. Oh, it doesn't half feel like spring is fully here now. I'm coming alive. This is when I feel I'm coming alive, just as my plants are too. So right now we're potting out my kale. I sowed these seeds a few weeks back. And look at that, that's a lovely little kale plant. The roots just look so healthy. They've been in the greenhouse for a few weeks and now this, as I said before, is their forever home. And I mean, I eat so much kale, so this may look like a lot of plants, but for me, this will feed me and my family and friends perfectly well. So I've got a number of jobs to do today. I need your help with me in the garden. It's so beautiful and therapeutic being outside. So now's your chance to get out in the garden and sow some seeds. It's not too late. At springtime, everything catches up. So even though I sowed these ages ago, if you were to sow some seeds of kale now, they'll all catch up and you'll, you'll have food really, really quick. So I'm just planting out my kales about a foot apart. I mean, it's probably too close, but it's something I always do because I'm limited with space. It works, I think, sometimes. I think they do like growing together. I will have to protect these soon though, because before I know it, come August, the butterflies and the caterpillars will be munching on this. And just like that, there's the spring over and rain is back. I guess we do have April showers here in Wales. Oh, so I planted out a load of kale. I've got so many more plants. So what I'm actually gonna do eventually with these is dot these around the garden and give them to my dad who's got a little vegetable garden too. So now that we're in the greenhouse, it's time for me to sort out the space ready to plant out my tomatoes. Everyone thought I was crazy sowing my tomato seeds back in January, which is fairly soon, too soon really, but I was so excited to get gardening. I started them off inside my house on heat mats. Um, and they're now at a point where they're this big and ready to be planted out into their final home in the greenhouse. Some I will keep for ready to go outside as well, but that will be in a few weeks time when it's definitely warmer and there's no fear of frosts. But before I actually get these out into the greenhouse, this year I've learned a mistake that I made from last year where I used twine to run across my greenhouse that actually supported my tomato plants climbing up, but the twine wasn't strong enough. So I took this uh, idea from Hugh Richards, my friend who's an amazing gardener if you haven't seen him on YouTube, and he uses some wire. So I'm gonna just tie some wire on this side ready for my tomatoes to climb up. That's the next job. So I also took Hugh's advice and put some hoops in the actual structure of the greenhouse because what I was finding is this old twine that I have here was just snapping when the tomatoes got really heavy and juicy. And this year, of course, I'm going to be growing some even more juicy, massive tomatoes. The ones last year were incredible, but this year, oh, and the recipes I have in mind for them are going to blow you away. So what I'm going to do first actually is just, I'm not going to plant them in individually. I'm going to just lay them out so I get my spacing right this year. This is a good way of making sure that I don't plant them too close to one another. I will do them probably closer than they should be, but because I don't have the longest greenhouse, I just try and cram as much in as possible. But as I said, when it gets a little bit warmer, some of them I'll hold back and they will actually be planted outside. Because, you know, although I'm not living in Spain or Italy, or another hot country in the summertime, it's still warm enough to plant tomatoes outside. Certain varieties do better than others, but what you can do is plant them up a, like a, a wall and of your house, and the wall will actually radiate heat through the night to keep the plant nice and toasty. So I'm just gonna lay these out all around my greenhouse. Oh, this is exciting. I can't believe it's this time of year again. I wanna get a little bit deep now, but something I was thinking about recently is that, and, I, and it's only a positive thing, it's not a negative thing, but you know, like how many of these seasons of growing do I have in my lifetime? And it may be 
10, it may be 40, it may be 50, it may be 60. If I eat the food I'm eating continually, I think it could be ages, hopefully anyway. Um, and I'll be gardening until I'm ancient. But um, you never know. I just want to make sure that m I'm making the most of each year and um, this brings me so much happiness. I didn't expect it to when I first started growing food. I just did it feeling really out of necessity um, during lockdown. So what I'm trying to do now is inspire more and more people, more young people to get in the garden and reap the benefits like I have. Because like I said, how many, how many growing seasons, how many summers do we have really to grow food? So it's, it's, now is the time to get into it. And oh, that smells like summer already, and it's nowhere near summer yet. But the smell of tomatoes is there's nothing better. All right, so let's get our first tomato in the ground. I'm going to tie some twine to my new cordage. Actually, I can do it on the hook by here, and then the actual twine goes underneath the root ball of the tomato and it gets locked into place. I guess the, all of the roots are going to lock around it really and hold it in place, which is good. Another trick I learned from Charles Dowd, and I think that's something I should mention, is that I've gone to the YouTube School of Gardening and it's a university in its own right. And I've learned so many skills that I use in the garden. So I recommend so many gardeners. It's actually a huge long list, Charles being one of them. But I'll pop a list beneath this video of gardeners that you need to watch on YouTube to learn the tricks and tips. And if you have any gardeners you can recommend, then just comment them below. Ah, it is potato time. Potatoes are the best things ever invented, I think. And these are just from the supermarket organic potatoes that I just put in front of my window inside the house and they've sprouted. That is called chitin, but not, sh you know, chitin with a C-H, not an S-H. I'm just going to plant them in the bed where I grew potatoes last year. I've just put a fresh layer of lovely compost on top so it's, it's very nutritious. And we'll plant them a few inches beneath the soil and before you know it one potato would have multiplied into hopefully a really big harvest all right so we're just covering over the potatoes now and it's just amazing that all of the nutrients and all the energy to grow a load of potatoes is stored just in in each potato already you wouldn't think it when you cut into a potato that there's so much life within them so all you need to do is cover over the potatoes i'll give it a little pat down there's enough moisture in this soil already and these will be ready to harvest in a few months time. Now a few months ago I actually made some new terracing on my hill out the back there and the soil will be quite tough and hard because it's clay and there's only a thin layer of compost put on top. So I think with a few more potatoes I'm actually going to plant them in the terracing because potato potatoes roots are really good at aerating the soil so not only will I grow some nice potatoes in it, also it's going to help my soil for future years of growing. Oh, it is a great time of year because around this time in April, my neighbour always messages me and she says, the rhubarb is ready. I don't know what she does to her soil or to her rhubarb plants, but she grows the most bountiful, delicious, incredible rhubarb I've ever experienced. And it fills me with so much joy going to pick it. So we're going to go down to my neighbours, pick some rhubarb, and that will be on my menu for the foreseeable future. Ah, oh, the rolling green hills of Wales. And it smells like spring. That's, that's when you know it's coming. It's coming at last. As much as I don't enjoy the cold, I think having the seasons makes you appreciate like that smell so much more. Um, and look at this rhubarb, it's crazy. Each year it gets bigger and bigger, like, look at this. Unbelievable stuff. And what I do with this mainly is ferment it, a technique called lacto-fermentation that I've done a few times on my YouTube. And I'm definitely gonna do a load of it with this rhubarb because it lasts for ages. But to be honest, I eat it so quick that it doesn't last that long. It's so delicious but it's so good for you as well. And it's only two ingredients, rhubarb and salt. That's it. Let's pick a load of this. 
Did you know that the leaves of rhubarb were often used uh, to sort of set the colour in clothes when you dye it? It's called a mordant, so I think they would just sort of put the leaves into the mix um, and just it would set that colour so that it wouldn't leach out. It's very interesting, but for me, they are toxic to eat. You won't, I won't eat these, but they'll go on my compost heap and add good nutrients as they break down over time. Oh, I love this rhubarb. Oh, this is a big one, guys. Eesh. Look at that for a rhubarb stalk. That is the perfect one to be fermented because they're a bit tougher and less sweet when they're this big. So perfect one for ferment fermentation. I think that's enough rhubarb for today. So it may look like I just raided my neighbor's garden and taken all of her rhubarb supply, but there's so much there and she actually asked me to keep taking it because she doesn't know what to do with it. She's got so much. And with rhubarb, once you've planted it, it just pumps out each year more and more. My rhubarb in my garden has only been growing for one year, so it hasn't got the abundance as of yet. But you don't really need to do anything to it either. It'll just keep on supplying you with delicious rhubarb year on year. So plant some rhubarb now. All right, let's give one taste test. Hopefully this will bring back some good spring memories. Mmm. Mmm. How is that so delicious? It's a weird thing that we create sweets and sell them all over the world when actual fruit is just, is the best thing ever. That is sweet tangy sour oh my gosh absolutely delicious So this goes all on. So that is going to break down over time. Add some nutrients to my compost. The chickens know not to eat the, comp the leaves, don't you? Don't eat the leaves, they're toxic. They know, they're good girls. Talking of compost and sort of adding some nutrients, this homemade compost is the best. But one thing that you can do is make a homemade tea. Sounds weird, but a tea that's actually gonna add nutrients to your compost that you just water over the top. All right, calm down, it's just rhubarb leaves. Ah, oh, I feel so happy being outside. Um, so for this tea, simple. All we need to do is harvest a load of nettles. You know nettles, stingy nettles, they grow everywhere. Just harvest a bunch, get them in a gallon bucket or whatever bucket, just a big bucket, fill it up with some rain water and let it sit there for a few weeks and before you know it you've got a nutritious tea that you can dilute with some more water and just pour over your beds and it will be very nutritious full of vitamins and minerals for the plants to thrive oh one final job i've got to do actually so if you don't know, I recently just had my dream kitchen built. You can watch a whole tour of my new kitchen by clicking up here somewhere. But the builders churned up all of my garden to build it, which is fine, I get it. So I am actually having to try and create some greenery, some grass, some new grass. So I've done a sowing of seeds, grass seeds recently, and they've, they've come up, but it's still quite patchy. So that's my next job. It's quite a nice therapeutic thing to do, like you're feeding some chickens. Well, that ends a lovely spring day in the garden. I haven't done anything that exciting, but it's just being outside with a bit of sun makes me feel so good. So I hope it encourages you to get outside. Plant just one thing. If you've never grown before, just do one thing for me this year. Send me a photo of it on Instagram and I'll respond and I'll say how proud of you I am. I'll see you soon with some more beautiful content from lovely Wales.